Thank you for participating in this project. Mercury is all around us and your contribution will help all of us better understand how Mercury moves through the environment and understand the risk of Mercury to national park ecosystems. To collect samples that don't get contaminated means following protocols and keeping everything ultra clean. This video supports the sampling guide for the collection of dragonfly larvae, water, and sediment samples from national parks for mercury analysis. You can download a copy of the guide at the website on the screen. Read the guide to make sure you have enough time for your participants to collect everything. You will be collecting water, sediment, and dragonfly larvae samples and submitting the samples for mercury analysis unless otherwise noted by the project coordinator. Field sampling is fun. Take pictures, be safe, make observations, record the event, but for sampling be sure to follow the protocol. This dragonfly larvae sampling video is split into equipment, when to sample, where to sample, how to sample, and storage and shipment of your sample. When you have arranged to participate in the Dragonfly project, you will receive a field collection kit. Keep everything stored in a safe, clean area until you are ready to sample. From the field gear sent to you, you will need powder-free nitrile gloves, blue or purple in color, clean new plastic spoons, brand new zipper seal bags, 40 small and 3 large size, tags for outer bags pre-printed with ID codes, field data sheet, pencil, a cooler, sharpie marker, a plastic ruler with millimeter scale. You will need to provide nets, D-nets or dip nets, clean new white dish pans, buckets or ice cube trays, bagged ice, disinfectant materials, for example, bucket with disinfectant, scrub brush and tub, field guide to dragonflies or macroinvertebrates, a trash bag, waders or rubber boots, and your citizen scientists who are going into the water must have personal flotation devices. It's good to have enough nets so that you can split your participants into groups of two to four, but if you do not have a lot of nets, then you can assign participants to jobs such as larva plucker, photographer, videographer, note taker. If you have a large group, it is good to have a few to several tubs or ice cube trays so that they are accessible to everyone. Make sure to plan when you sample. The water and sediment samples need to be collected within two weeks, either before or after, of when the dragonfly larvae are collected. Do your best to schedule sampling during consistent weather conditions, as this will reduce uncertainty when interpreting results. If you are collecting all three sample types on one day, water, sediment, and dragonfly larvae, Collecting dragonfly larvae comes last. It's easy to contaminate samples with mercury because it's all around us, in our hair, in soil, leaves, etc. So we need to keep everything ultra clean. Locate likely habitats for dragonfly larvae. Vegetated bank margins, snags and logs, aquatic vegetation beds and decaying organic matter, silt, sand, gravel substrate. Note your observations and fill out the field sheet. Take a site photo. Note: Make sure your participants know generally what dragonfly larvae look like and keep in mind that you will ultimately submit 20 larvae from each water body. Each larva should at least be 15 millimeters long for the lab to analyze for mercury. Generally this is the sampling procedure. With nets collect larvae from water bodies, gather the collected dragonfly larvae in tubs or ice cube trays, Bag the samples, that is, transfer the larva into clean sample bags, measure and ID the larva. Double bag the samples. Each larva will end up being double bagged with an identification slip sandwiched into the outer bag. Place on ice, freeze, and ship. Along the way, it is very important to remember that your citizen scientists who are touching the dragonfly larva must do so with clean nitrile gloves or clean plastic spoons. To begin, go downstream or away from the sampling site if you are in a lake. Rinse the nets and dishpans with water from the stream or pond you are sampling. Partly filled dishpan or bucket with water from the stream or pond. Ice cube trays are nice sorting containers too. They can be filled with stream or pond water as well. From the shore, or with personal flotation devices and other appropriate gear if you are getting into the water, 
Jab your net into the likely habitats. Jab downstream first and work upstream if in flowing water. Jab a few times then sweep the net up to the surface. Look for dragonfly larvae in the net. This may take a few moments. The dragonfly larva might lie still and then begin to move. Look for movement. The person with the gloved hands can paw through any sediment that is in the net to look for larva. They can also push up on the bottom of the net so that it is easier to look for things in the net. People with spoons can scrape or dig through any sediment in much the same way. Pluck with a nitrile gloved hand or a plastic spoon larva directly from the net and place it into the partly filled tub, bucket, or ice cube tray. Do not touch the samples, the individual dragonfly larvae, with anything except a clean plastic spoon or powder-free nitrile gloves, purple or blue gloves. At most, spend a few minutes jabbing and searching or emptying the net. If you don't find much after a few minutes, move to another site within the same water body. When you have collected a number of larvae in the tubs or ice cube trays, remember you will ultimately submit 20 larvae to the lab for analysis. Bring your tub to a place where you can bag, measure, identify, and double bag the samples for shipment. Here your participants will be taking individual larvae from the collection tub and bagging them in the small plastic zipper bags. Bagging requires two people. One person is clean hands and one person is dirty hands. Dirty hands is in charge of the sample bags and the other person, clean hands, will pick up and place the samples in the bags. Clean Hands puts on a glove. One gloved hand should suffice to pick and bag larvae. Once the glove is on, Clean Hands touches nothing but the sample and any pre-cleaned supplies. Unlike with water sampling, Dirty Hands does not need to wear gloves. For each sample, or individual larva, Dirty Hands opens a bag for Clean Hands, and Dirty Hands does not touch the bag past the zipper. Using a nitrile gloved hand or plastic spoon, Clean Hands places one dragonfly into a sample bag while Dirty Hands holds the bag. Note: There can be many pairs of people acting as Clean Hands and Dirty Hands. Alternatively, there can be Clean Hands, Dirty Hands, and then a larva measurer, recorder, identifier, double bagger, general manager. Nothing should touch the inside of the bag except the dragonfly larva. Think of each individual sample as a fresh start. Everything needs to be cleaned between samples and be treated just like the first sample you took. If there is a lot of water in the spoon, drain it off into the tub or the ice cube tray before putting the larva in the plastic bag. You really only want the dragonfly in the bag, not the water. Once the larva is in the bag, Dirty Hands seals the bag. Once this inner bag is sealed, it is not reopened. Be clean with your spoon and your gloves. If the gloves or spoon have been tossed on the ground or contaminated, say by brushing back hair, start afresh. If the gloves or spoon have not been contaminated, then swish your spoon or gloved hands in pond water in the dishpan and tub between samples to ensure there's no carryover from one sample to the next. Go to another individual larva in the tub or ice cube tray and repeat. You will only be submitting 20 samples per water body to the lab, so if you have collected a lot of larvae, please try to not bag all of them. Any larva that is bigger than 15 millimeters should be bagged over any smaller larva. There are a few more steps to take before you can submit the dragonfly larvae samples to the lab. You must measure, identify, fill out the sample tag, double bag each sample, and fill out the field data sheet, preferably in the field so that each sample can be frozen. Measuring. Dirty Hands, the measurer, or another participant uses the plastic ruler held up to the individual in the bag and measures the body length in millimeters from the tip of the mentum, or the front of the head, to the end of the tail spine. As a reference, most larvae will range between 10 and 40 millimeters. Tagging. Dirty Hands, or someone assigned the tagging job, fills out a tag for the bagged individual and slips it, the tag, in the inner bag with the sample into an outer bag 
You have been supplied with enough zipper small bags so that you can use a small bag for the outer bag. Your sample tags or labels have an ID code pre-printed on them. Use these codes if you need to refer to a particular sample in your notes. Dirty Hands, or the tagger, seals the outer bag. Please identify dragonfly larvae to family if you are comfortable doing so. There are only six major families in most places. Identification can be accomplished in the field with a hand lens and guide book, or the field ID cards available at the web address on the screen. Or you can bag samples and bring them to a clean indoor workspace to look more closely. An online key can assist you in the identification efforts. The online video identifying main dragonfly larvae to family will also assist with identification because the same families are found outside of Maine. There are three opportunities to ID the larva. When you are scooping them up from the tub or ice cube tray, but clean hands is still the only one to touch the larva. Once the larva is in the inner bag, when dirty hands is measuring the larva, but do not reopen the bag for a better look. Remember, once the inner bag is sealed, it is not reopened. Once you are back at the lab or other clean indoor space, the larva can be taken out of the outer bag, but again, do not open the inner bag and do not get the sample tags confused. Identifying to family requires careful inspection. The ID will be checked once the laboratory receives samples, but identifying samples when they are fresh is helpful in the event of damage during shipping. Look at the samples you've collected. If you have identified the family already, please choose at least three individuals in each of the families you found. If you only found one individual in a certain family, please don't submit that one. Fill out the field data sheet. Put the dragonfly larvae samples on ice until you return to the office or lab or field station, wherever there is a freezer. Leave no trace. Be sure to collect all of your field gear and remove trash from the sample site before departing. Disinfect waders, nets, and any other gear that has been in the water before moving to your next site at a different water body. Consult your permit since some parks have different protocols for disinfection. Most, but not all, will specify a 5% or 10% bleach solution, which is a mixture of household bleach and water. The dragonfly samples are frozen and shipped on dry ice. They can be kept in the freezer until all your sites are done. No need to rush back to ship immediately after sampling, unlike the water samples. To ship the larva samples you will need your samples, your field data sheet, your FedEx shipping label, a cooler, your FedEx shipping label, the dry ice label, and clear packing tape, dry ice, your field coordinator's contact information. Take your samples from the freezer where they have been stored, place them in the cooler with the dry ice. Place a copy of the field data sheet in a zipper bag. Don't forget to keep a copy for yourself. Seal the bag with a copy of the field data sheet and place that in the cooler as well. There is a small vent hole in the top of the coolers being used for dry ice shipments. This vent hole must remain open. Do not cover it with a shipping label or packing tape. Seal the cooler with tape. Put the shipping label on the cooler. When shipping samples on dry ice, you must check the dry ice box on the FedEx label. Additionally, the cooler must have the dry ice label included in the sampling kit, affixed with waterproof tape. Because there is not always someone in the lab to accept samples on Saturday or Sunday, and it takes a day to get the samples to the lab, do not ship on Friday. Additionally, if something happens to a Thursday shipment, there is no salvaging samples. Therefore, ship your samples on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Contact your coordinator when a shipment is ready to verify that someone is available to accept the shipment. Shipment of coolers should be sent FedEx overnight. Your coordinator will need to know the FedEx tracking number for your cooler. Be ready to give it to him or her. Take cooler into your local FedEx office or arrange for pickup. Contact your field coordinator if you have trouble finding dry ice or have questions about it. If you have any questions about sampling, please contact your project coordinator. Keep things clean, be safe, thank you, and have fun.